Hello dear friends, today I want to show you very rare photos of the very first indigenous people of Canada. In the early 1910s, photographer Harry Pollard traveled around Canada to take a series of photographs of the natives, who were one of the first people who settled in Western Canada and Alberta. These photographs capture, among others, people from Tsuutiana, Siksika, Kainai, Pekani, the number of Sarsi people, Tsuutiana went down to 200 in the mid-20th century but has since come up to 2000. They are depicted in traditional dresses, feathered headdresses, and hunting bison. These historic images, which can be found on the provincial archives of Alberta, include the individual's names and tell a story in themselves. Many of their names are themed around nature, like lone walking buffalo and running antelope. First Nations in Alberta prior to European contact included the Siksika, Blackfoot, Kainai, Blood, Pikani, Pagan, and Gross Venner, now in Montana. Other groups, including the Kudene and the Crow, made expeditions into the land to hunt buffalo and go to war. The Tsuutiana, a branch of the beaver, occupied central and northern parts of the land, while the north was occupied by the Slavey. Some speculate that men from England reached Newfoundland as early as the 1480s predating Columbus's voyage of 1,492. The only hard evidence points to John Cabot's English expedition of 1,497 as the first known voyage to mainland North America in the new era of overseas discovery. A French explorer named Jacques Cartier arrived in 1,534. He made three voyages to Canada in eight years. On his first voyage, he entered and explored the Gulf of St. Lawrence. On his second, he followed St. Lawrence to the Iroquois townships of Stadacona, Quebec and Hochelaga, Montreal. The Iroquois in this area explained that the river stretched three months travel to the west. For the first time, Europeans had some idea of the vastness of the land. Although Carter did not find the great quantity of gold and other precious things mentioned in his instructions, he did locate the Gulf's abundant fisheries and the mainland's furs, tempting Europe's commercial interests. Over the next three centuries, the French, British, and other European settlers would continue to prosper from the fisheries and the fur trade in the East. Through many wars and battles that involved land and the establishment of colonies, settlers and explorers gradually started to move further west. In 1874, Canada began asserting its presence in what would become Alberta, sending the Northwest Mountain Police across the prairies to present a left bridge to establish Fort McLeod. In 1875, the Mount has built forts in present-day Calgary and Edmonton. The Canadian Pacific Railway reached Calgary in 1883. The numbered treaties were a series of 11 treaties made from 1871 to 1921 between the Canadian government and indigenous peoples. The government thought the treaties would help to assimilate indigenous peoples into white, colonial society and culture. The First Nations viewed the treaties as a way to negotiate the sharing of their traditional territories. Treaty making was so important that opening and closing ceremonies were part of the process and people traveled long distances to arrive at the negotiation locations to witness the event. In exchange for their traditional territory, government negotiators made various promises to indigenous peoples, including special rights to lands, the distribution of cash payments, hunting and fishing tools, and farming supplies. These terms of agreement vary by treaty and are controversial and contested. Treaties still have ongoing legal and socioeconomic impacts on indigenous communities. The Iroquois in this area explained that the river stretched three months travel to the west. For the first time, Europeans had some idea of the vastness of the land. Although Carter did not find the great quantity of gold, and other precious things mentioned in his instructions, he did locate the Gulf's abundant fisheries and the mainland's furs, tempting Europe's commercial interests. Over the next three centuries, the French, British, and other European settlers would continue to prosper from the fisheries and the fur trade in the East. Through many wars and battles that involved land and the establishment of colonies, settlers and explorers gradually started to move further west.
Thank you for watching. If you liked it, please like it so that I would be motivated to look for more interesting photos from our history.